Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you who are visiting us by Facebook. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are here to celebrate the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. You find in your bulletin the greeting. Come on, y'all. Let us worship the Lord. Come to Jesus, all who have suffered a beatdown this week. Come to Jesus, all of you who are tired and conf conflict all around, tired of high gas prices, tired of glass ceilings, quotes, minimum wage jobs, and limited family values. Jesus said, I'll, I'll give you rest. I'll bring you relief. I'll provide your deliverance. I'll make a way. Many, and Jesus will give us wonderful rest. Come all you, let us worship the Lord. Amen. Let us worship the Lord in songs by singing with uplifting voices. Uh, 526, 526. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. So let's sing with uplifting voices.
Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Almighty God. How many glad to be back in the house Amen. of the Lord one more time? How many just glad to be alive one more time? If he allowed you another opportunity at life to try to get this thing right. So today we come to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We come to give him all the praise and all the glory. Because it's not about us. It's about him. It says when, when praises go up, blessings come down. So we ought to be in a praise mood this morning. We ought to be in a praise mood today. Not only did he wake us up, but he allowed us to get here safe without any hurt, harm, or danger. He allowed us to have a roof over our head, food in our refrigerator, clothes in our closet. He's wonderful to us. Sister Flossie Fulton will come with our opening prayer. And then... We have the core response. The Old Testament scripture will be read uh, by Brother Maceo Scott Jr., Genesis 24, verses 34 through 38. And then the Reverend Shirley McKnight will come with our gospel reading, Matthew 11, 25 through 30, in that order. Let's receive Sister Flossie Fulton by the words of Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. So again, we come into the house of the Lord to give him praises and to worship his holy name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace this morning as humble as we know how. Yes. Lord, we come as children seeking, O oh God, what it is that you have for us, O oh God. And we know, Lord, you will supply all of our needs, O oh God. Not just some of them, but all of them, oh God. And Lord, all you ask of us just to serve you, just to worship you, just to give you praises on this morning. And Father God, oftentimes we don't even stop to say, Lord, I thank you. But all you want is just to thank you from us, oh God. That can go so far, so far. We'll wait, oh God, until the time come when we're in distress. And everything seems to be going wrong, and we'll call on your holy name. But he said to praise him at all times, not just at the bad time, but praise him, oh God, in the good times as well, oh God. And let him know, oh Lord, that we're not just coming to you just to, for you to fulfill our needs. Be coming to you, oh God, because we know who you are. You are our Father, oh God. We know you're going to give us the things we need, but all you asking from us is just a little, just a little bit, oh God. And the little things mean so much, oh God. Let us learn, oh God, how to appreciate those little things, oh God. Where well, everybody's looking at the big things and overlooking the little things. Father God, in these days and times, Lord, we need you now more than we need you before. More than ever, oh God. It's not getting any better, oh God. But let us, oh God, do your will. Do the things that you want us to do, regardless of what somebody else may be doing. Because, Lord, it's each and every one of us that have to stand before you in the judgment and give account for whatever it is we did or that we did not do. And Lord, let us be ready. Let Bethel members as a whole, oh God, serve you. It's not about serving the world or for what we can get or what we can do to be looked up to. But Lord, let us all look up to you. Let us look to the hills from where our help cometh, because our help comes from you, O oh God. It doesn't come from man, O oh God. It comes from you, Lord Jesus. And let us remember that, O oh God. Every day, let us have a praise in our heart and a praise and a thank you on our lips there, God. And Father God, just look at all your children everywhere, O oh God, this morning. The sick, 
the bereaves, the shut-ins. Just go into the homes, oh God. Touch, heal, bless, and restore, oh God. And Father God, we just give you thanks, and we give you praises. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Correction in the scripture for today. I'll be reading Genesis, the 24th chapter, 34 through the 38th verse. And I'll be reading from the NIV version. So he said, I am Abraham, servant. <clears throat> servant, the Lord has blessed my master abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female servants, and, king, and camels and donkey. The master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age, and, has, and he has given him everything he owed. He owed. And my master made, made me swear an oath and said, You must not get a wife not for my son from the daughter of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son. Thus I have read Genesis 24 24th chapter 30, 34 through the 38th verse. May the Lord add a reading to the hearing of these words. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Will you please stand? as I read the gospel this morning. And our gospel lesson is coming from the book of Matthew, and it is the 11th chapter, verses 25 through 30. And it reads, At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the people who are wise and smart. But you have shown them to those who are like little children. Yes, Father, this is what you really wanted. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to tell. Come to me, all of you who are tied and have heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Accept my teachings and learn from me beca become because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest for your lives. 
The teaching that I ask you to accept is easy. The Lord I give you is to carry is light. I have read to you uh, the 11th chapter of Matthew, verses 25 through 30. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 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 We ask that you remain standing for our affirmation of faith, our affirmation of faith, which can be found on page 881, page 881. And when you've gotten there, please say amen. amen. Let's do this together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in his Son, Christ Jesus, who is the seed of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The glory per tree. be seated. Next we'll have a selection from our choir and then I'll come back with the morning message. Amen. Amen. You've been in the storm Seems like forever Nights of confusion has been so long. Your ship has lost anchor, and the storms got you drifting. Your night almost over. Oh, 
Let anything happen to us when we ride out the storm. Yes. So let us pray this morning. God, here we are, standing behind the sacred desk on the second Sunday in July. We come, O oh God, with thanksgiving in our hearts and in our on our lips. We thank you, O oh God, for a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. We thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to come where we can lift our hands and say, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We lift our hands, O oh God, in praise and in adoration to know that you've been good to us, better to us than we've been to our own selves. And God, as I stand here to deliver a word from you, I pray, O oh God, that ears and hearts will be open to receive what you have in store for them. Not only them, O oh God, but consecrate and anoint me and move me out of the way that the people may hear and see you instead of me. God, these and all other blessings we ask in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Let every heart say amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Acts. Acts, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> Acts, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 7. Acts, the fourth chapter, 
starting at verse 7. Acts, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 7. And when you have it, please say amen. And if you don't have it yet, say hold on, Rev. All right. That's Acts, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 7. And here's what it says on this day. And I'll be reading from the common English version of the Bible. But my, all of it is God's holy and divine word. Verse 7 says, They had Peter and John brought before them and asked, By what power or in what name did you do this? Then Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, answers, Leaders of the people and elders, are, you being, are we being examined today because something good was done for the sick person? A good deed that healed him? If so, then you and all the people of Israel need to know that this man stands healthy before you because of the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the, is the stone you stone you builders reject. He has become the cornerstone. Salvation can be found in no one else. Throughout the whole wide world, no other name has been given among humans through which we must be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I want to use for a brief topic this morning. There's no salvation without Jesus. There's no salvation without Jesus. Last week we preached about sin and eternal life. We talked about the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We understand that sin separates us from the love of Jesus Christ. This morning we are going to talk about without Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And if we think about what that means, if we think about what all God has done for us through Christ Jesus, and, and if we think about some things that we can't have without something else, for example, we can't have peanut butter without jelly to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, you can't run your car without gas. The lights will not come on without power. Your life is not the same without Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is an important part of our lives. So in other words, there's no salvation without Jesus. Well, here are some other things that we need for Jesus to be involved with in order for it to work. Uh, there's no healing without Jesus. There's no deliverance without Jesus. There's no resurrection without Jesus. Salvation means deliverance from sin it's, and its consequences, and we as believers are to be brought about to Christ through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, how many know that, that if it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't be saved? Yes. How many know if it had not been for Jesus, where would we be? Yes. If it had not been for Jesus who makes ways out of no way, where would we be? If it had not been for Jesus who touched us with the finger of love this morning. Where would we be? If it had not been for Jesus who wrapped his loving arms of protection all around us. And got us from point A to point B safe. Where would we be? Yes, yes. Here we find in the text the leaders and elders of Jerusalem have brought Peter and John before them to answer about something that happened in the land. These religious leaders 
didn't believe in the resurrection. Yes. These were the same folk that were responsible for Jesus' death. Yes. These leaders wanted to, wanted to be known by what power mm -hmm. or what authority yes. did they heal the sick man. Yes. And the reason they were asking the question because they felt threatened because their reputation and positions were on the line. You see, they were supposed to be the only powerful folk in town. They had all the power. They were the supreme. They were the high elites. They were the ones that made all the decisions. They were the ones that thought they had it going on. But I stopped by to tell you that a man named Jesus came onto the scene. And when Jesus comes in on the scene, no matter how powerful we think we are, he's much more powerful than we are. See, I can't heal the sick without Jesus. I can't do anything without Jesus. It takes Jesus plus me or you to get something done. Yeah, we don't have any power. So we should fool ourselves to think we got it all and think we got it going on. But then we go to the power source. We go to Jesus ourselves. So how can we have more power than Jesus? Sometimes we think we got a little power because we're we in high positions and we, we make some decisions about how people live and make some decisions about what's going on in the world. But still, you don't have any power, not unless Jesus come down and give you some power. And then it shouldn't be about me and I. Mm -hmm. It should be about everybody. Yeah. Because God didn't only come and save me. Yeah. He saved you as well. Yeah. And he's still in the saving business. Yeah. You can look around and see God is still in the saving business. Yeah. He's still in the healing business. He's yeah. still making a way out of no way. He's yeah. still on the throne. Yeah. See, they wanted the people to worship them. All right. They wanted the people to understand. They tried to get the people to understand that, that these two folk who came through, uh -huh. they couldn't do anything without them. Yes. But I'm so glad uh -huh. that Peter and John uh -huh. had a higher source. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They knew a higher power yeah. than the elders and the religious leaders in, in that community. They knew a higher power to know that their, their, that their faith shouldn't be put in man. Their faith should be put in Jesus. In other words, they were trying to throw their weight around a little bit. Make people think they got it going on. And that's some of us. We think we got it going on, but... We think we got it going on, but... I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to word this thing without being politically correct. I can't say what I want to say. But they, they think they got it going on, but they are just... Y'all will run me off as I say what I want to say. But they're just perpetrating a fraud. They're just pretending to be all high and mighty. When they know their help comes from the Lord, just like my help comes from the Lord, just like your help comes from the Lord, all of our help Yes, the text says Peter had the Holy Spirit with him when they asked him the question. They asked him, are you responsible for this man being healed? Peter told them, no, I'm not responsible because I don't have that kind of power. He said, it's because of Jesus that this man is healed. Yes, the same Jesus who you and your people hollered, crucify him, put him in the grave, but God raised him up. Yeah. 
You know how we get when we see something go taking place or something going on that we don't understand? Amen. We call a meeting yeah. to find out what's going on. Yeah. Who done this? And who told you to do this? You didn't get my permission to do this. Peter was telling me, I don't need your permission because I got Jesus permission. And as long as I got Jesus permission, I don't need nobody else to tell me what I can and can't do because I have the answer to him. Yes, yes. Parents, we do the same thing sometimes. Amen. We could call our children in when they're doing something. Who told you to take that car and go to that football game? Who told you to take that money and put gas in that car? Who told you to go to school and act a fool? Yeah, we do it. To our children. And then there's some they have the meeting before the meeting. So when we get there, we already got it worked out. Regardless of what the other folks say, we got it worked out. And if you do as we say, everything. But I'm so glad that these folks and the folk of the day don't figure out stuff for us. We got somebody we can call on regardless of what's going on in our lives. And it's not the preacher. It's not the deacon in the church. It's not the bishop. His name is Jesus. Lead in the midnight hour when you can't sleep at night. You walk in the floor. You call on the name of Jesus. When things are not going right in your life, you call on the name of Jesus. When your children are acting crazy, you call on the name of Jesus. Yes. Because you call on me sometimes, I may not answer the phone. But there is somebody. You don't need Barazza. Don't need FTC. Don't need no other carrier. Nobody but calling your name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Lord, it's me. It's, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Peter goes on. You see, yeah. The same Jesus whom y'all reject. Yeah has become the cornerstone yes. of the church. Y'all yes. know him. The same one you saw it crucified. Yes. Same one y'all pierced in his side. Yes. The same one y'all hung him on the cross. Yes. The same one that y'all took him off the cross and put him in the grave. Yes. But all on Sunday morning, yes. something spectacular happened. Yes. Oh, Jesus said, get up, get up. Yes. out of the grave. Mary went running back and said, he's not there. He is alive. Amen. Yes. Thank you, I'm about finished. I'm about finished. But without Jesus, there's no salvation even today. And without no Calvary, there's no salvation. See, when Jesus went to the cross... He paid the price for all of us who trust in him and who give their life to him. He died a horrible death on the cross that you and I may enjoy being saved. Without a price and without fear, he hung there. The greatest demonstration of an awesome love of God is for you to, be, to imagine hanging on the cross. Yes. The old saints used to sing a song that says, Down at the cross, down where my Savior died, down from where cleansing my sin, cry, cried. There to my heart, 
There the blood was applied. Singing glory, glory, glory to his name. Glory to the one who died for you. Glory to the one who rose from the dead. Glory to the one that has all healing power. Glory to the one that delivered us from slave to sin to death. Glory to his name. See, without Jesus, none of us can be saved. Jesus himself, that he did not come to save religion or the righteous, but he came to save the sinners like you and I. He came to save us, sinners. One who sinned, he came to save us, and when he saved us, he promised us eternal life. Yes. Yes. And another thing, without Jesus, there can be no forgiveness. Yes. yes, there can be no forgiveness because he's forgiven us for all of our sin. Regardless of what you've done in life, you never need to fear that Jesus will turn and walk away. Even the thief on the cross... This man lived a wicked life and was even there seeing him die on the cross. He thought he had no chance because he didn't do good work. He didn't, wasn't baptized. He didn't join the church, but Jesus still saved him and forgave him for all of his sins. See, without Jesus, there will be no eternal life. The life that Jesus gives is not just good for a short time, but it's good for eternity. That means we, Jesus gave us a life that we can still live here on earth, but after this life on earth is gone, we still can live a life with him. Yes. Jesus said himself in John 10, 28 and 29 that those who come to him, receive him, receives eternal life. And they will never perish. Jesus promised all these things to those who give their life to him. Because he offers us salvation. And the good part about it is, it's free. It's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. It's not for the billionaires or the millionaires. It's for little old souls just like us. The only thing we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. And when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, he forgive us for all those things that we've done. Yeah, he forgives us for all those things that we've done. And even the Bible says he forgives us 70 times 7. But my thing is, why would you want to continue to sin if you accept Jesus as your Savior? Amen. If you know that, if you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are saved, why would you go back? Yeah. If you see the life, you hear the promises, you see the wonderful life, he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Why would you go back into darkness? Why? Notice, here's the bottom line. If you want to be saved and enjoy all the benefits of salvation through Jesus Christ, then the only way for you to get in on this ride is to place your faith in Jesus Christ and trust him and trust him alone for salvation. That's why the songwriter wrote this song, Come to Jesus. Say, come to Jesus just now. Just now, come to Jesus. The second part said, he will save you just now. Just now. He was. Then it goes on to say, only obey him. 
then says, he will cleanse you just now. Amen. Why don't you come to Jesus? Because there is no salvation without him. There is no nothing without him. We live our lives daily on a whim. We live our lives hoping and praying that nothing happens to us. Hoping and praying that we can get through the day without anything happening. Hoping and praying that we can get through without sinning. But Jesus, Mary's baby, the only one that can turn water into wine. The only one that took Jairus' daughter by the hand and told her to get up. The only one that called Lazarus three times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and Lazarus got up. The only one that went to the cross for you and I. The only one that didn't stay in, didn't stay in the grave, he got up so that we can stand up. He lives so that we can live. He's here so that we can be examples of what a Christian life is all about. We are here to walk as Jesus walked. We're here to share our testimony that the Lord is good and he's good all the time. That he woke us up this morning. That he made a way out of no way. That he'd been there for us when nobody else could. When I'm walking at the night, I call on the name of Jesus. And he come see about me. Yeah. And he come see about you. Yeah. But I'm glad this morning that I know him by his name. Yeah. The songwriter say, call him by his name. His name is Jesus. 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 Call him by his name. When you call him by his name, something begins to happen. Something on the inside starts stirring. Something on the inside starts moving. Something on the inside starts bubbling. And you can't hold it to yourself. You got to let somebody know that Jesus is my rock in a weary land. He is my wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is my all in all. He is my doctor in the sick room. He is my friend when I'm friendless. He is. My everything. He is my lover when I'm all by myself. He is my friend when I don't have any friends. He is the person I can talk to when I can't talk to nobody else. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody but Jesus and me. So oh, I'm glad this morning that I know him for myself. I'm glad this morning that I tried him and found out that he's all right. Is he all right with you? Have you ever tried him? Do you know he's all right? You ought to tell somebody he's all right. What's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Yes, he's all right. He is. He's all right. He's all right. Oh, he's all right. Oh, he's all right. He woke me up this morning. He's all right. He gave me breath this morning. He's all right. He gave me a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. He's all right. He's all right. Say yeah. 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 He's all right. Yes. Yeah, he's all right. And I'm glad. I'm glad this morning that I found out it by myself that he is my all in all. He is my shelter in the time of need. He is my rock in a weary land. He 
he is my all in all Jesus my savior Jesus your savior Jesus your lily in the valley Jesus your Friday morning star do I have any witnesses to know that Jesus is yes he is my everything he is my everything to me to me he's my everything I can't do nothing without him. but with him I can do all things so this morning this morning if he's been good to you you ought to stand on your feet and give God some glory. You ought to stand and give him some praise. You ought to stand and open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. All the time. And all the time. Yes all the time he's good yes he's good and he's good all the time the songwriter says you can't make me doubt it because I know too much about it no matter what people may say oh still call on his name no matter how people treat me still want to serve him no matter how down and low I get oh he reached down and picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on a solid ground yes this morning this morning the question is you know him for yourself do you ever talk with him do you ever have a conversation just you and Jesus sometime when I'm riding along oh, I turn the radio off so I can hear what he says when I talk to him see sometimes you have to get all by yourself turn everything off and just sit there and meditate and just tell him all about your troubles and tell him all about what you're going through and he'll come to your rescue. He'll give you an answer. He'll give you what you need. Yes. He is my everything. My all in all. And I can't do nothing without him. Um, sometimes I think besides I think we can do it all ourselves but do nothing in our lives so this morning there may be someone who doesn't know Christ in the part of their sin you can come and get to know this Jesus that we know get to know this Jesus that has all power in the Peter and John understood they didn't have any power but their power and I don't have any power I just preach as God tells me to preach I listen to what he wants me to preach and I preach his word I don't get any accidents. I'm just a servant, a vessel being used by God. So I'm here to tell you this morning that God will save you. God will take the taste of alcohol and drugs out of your mouth. God will put your homes back together. 
God will put you on the right path. Accept him as your savior. So as our choir sing our invitation to discipleship song, is there one? Is there one who feel Jesus nudging on your heart? Nudging you and telling you to get up and go. And see when he sends you He's already made a way for you. None of us in here came cleaned up. All of us, when we came to Jesus, we were broken, we were busted, we were disgusted, we was tired of living the same old life. And we came to Jesus and gave our lives and he cleaned us up put us on and made us who we are today so if you've already saved and want to join us here at Bethel the invitation extended to you as well you can come you can come you can come and Say you want to be a part of us here. The choir said he will take care of you. He will take care of you. Will there be one this morning? If not, the altar is open. You can come to the altar for prayer. You can come to the altar for prayer. Take care. Is there plenty good room? Yes, there's plenty good room here at the altar. Let us pray. God, we come as humble as we know how. We come with our head bows and our eyes closed. We come to a God that knows all about us. A God that even knows the hairs on our head. We come in God, first of all, with thanksgiving on our lips. Thank you for all the wonderful things you've done in our lives. Thank you for being the saving God that you are. Thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to come to the house of worship one more time. Now, Lord, we ask that there are some people who are going through sickness. There are some people who are going through bereavement this morning. We ask God only as you can to touch right now. In the name of Jesus, we, we're claiming deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we're claiming comfort for those families that are going through bereavement this morning. Your words say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It also tells us that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And God, we're claiming your word. We're depending on your word Lord, just move in a mighty way. Go with our sick and shut in all over the world. Go with the ones here at Bethel. Go with Sister Jenny Brown Burroughs as she recover from her heart surgery. 
God, go with Sister Paula. Go with all of those, oh God, on our sick and shut in list. Touch name by name and heart by heart. Help them to realize that you're still God and you still are in the healing business. You still got healing in the palm of your hand. Not only in the palm of your hand, God, we want to be like the woman that just to touch the hem of your garment. And she was made whole. We want to be made whole this morning, God. We want sin removed from our body that we can worship and praise your name in spirit and in truth. God, we are gathered around this altar and some are standing in the pews and the choir and standing around the doors. They need you in their life. I don't know what they're dealing with, but you know. Give them what they need right now, God. Strengthen them all where they're weak and build us up all where we're torn down. Prop us up on every leaning side. Because we know that we serve an awesome God. A God that never fails us and haven't left us yet. And God, just because we know that, we give everything to you. All our problems, all our circumstances, all our finances, we give our children, our spouse, our church, we give it all to you, oh God. The one who holds us in the palm of your hand. Bless this world, oh God. This world is, is in a chaotic state, oh God. But, but we know that you hold the world. and The only thing you got to do is say, peace, be still. And everything will come back to where it should be. Everything will come back under your order if you speak. Because the Bible tells us, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face, then, then we should hear from heaven. And when we hear from heaven, everything will be all right. God, thank you for this wonderful worship service. Thank you for your spirit being in this place. Thank you, oh God, for the humble spirits that are present. God, when we leave this place, we thank you for not leaving here the same way we came. We pray, oh God, that whoever came with burdens on their hearts, their burdens have been lifted. Whoever came with problems in their lives, their problems have been taken away. God, we just thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we lift our hands and say, Hallelujah! Praise your holy and righteous name. Because you're wonderful to all of us. Not just a select few, but to all of us. You are great and mighty and awesome. And then, oh Lord, when we've done all that you required us to do on this side of Jordan, we ask you for a home in your kingdom. Where Job declared the wicked shall cease from trouble and our weary soul shall be at rest. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let every heart say amen. 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 Oh, let's give the Lord a clap of praise and tell somebody God loves you and I do too. On my way home. Come on. On my way home, dear. On my way home, Lord. Come on, Lord. I have to cry sometime, y'all. Hey, I have to cry sometime. I have to cry sometime, y'all. Come on, y'all. Here we go. Fix the Jesus. Ah, oh, fix the Jesus. Fix my mind, y'all. Fix my mind, y'all. Fix my heart now. 
Fix my heart now. Do it for me right now. I know you can fix it. Won't God fix it? Won't God fix it? He'll fix it for you, y'all. Like he fixed it for me. On my way home, y'all. Hey. On my way home, y'all. On my way home, y'all. Come on, y'all. Yeah, here's, here's what I want you to do. Go to the hospital. Somebody in pain. Touch them, Jesus. Like I know you can. Put your hands on them, Lord. I know you will work it. Ain't God good, y'all. God will fix it. Get on your knees, Lord. And say what you want. Because I know he'll fix it. On my way home. Hey. On my way home. On my way home, y'all. Come on, y'all. Ah, oh, yeah. Fix the Jesus. Fix the Jesus. Fix the Jesus. Ah, oh, y'all don't hear me. I know you can fix it. Ah, oh, fix my heart now. Fix my heart now. Fix my mind now. Won't God fix it? Won't he do it? He'll do it for you. Like he did it for me, y'all. On my way home, y'all. Come on, y'all. Hey, On my way home, y'all. Oh, on my way home, y'all. Come on, y'all. Fix Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. Good morning, church. At this time like to stand and say their names and where they're visiting from. No. Welcome visitors. Bethel United Methodist Church family and pastor extends a very warm welcome to everyone who's visiting with us today. Whether you're a visitor or searching for a place of worship, we are delighted to have you here. And when you leave this building, we hope that we've cultivated a positive relationship and encourage your spirit in the Lord. Amen. Welcome. Let's remember to pray for our sick and shut-in members, friends of our church, community, and each other. Sister Paula Leggett, Sister Crystal House, Sister Verley Epps, Mr. Esau Ross Jr., Mr. Gus Scott, Jenny Brown Burroughs, Sister Lou Ethel Jean, Sister Bobette S. McFadden. Friendly reminders, Bethel United Methodist Church Bible Study will resume on August 2nd at 6 o'clock p.m. Win of Faith meeting every third Sunday after service. United Methodist Men meeting every second Saturday at 9 a.m. Children and Youth Sunday, July 23rd at 10 a.m. Vacation Bible School, July 24th through the 28th. Bridge of Boston and Rear of the Sanctuary for Tides and Arthur. Thanks to our musicians, ushers, and everyone who participated in our worship service this morning. For any prayer concerns, sickness, or death, you can contact Reverend Lewis Ashley at the numbers listed in the program. Thoughts of the week. When one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has opened before us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the family and friends of Ms. Jeannie Brown Burroughs invite you to a giving heart service. The keynote speaker will be U.S. Congressman James E. Clyburn. The program will be here on July 16th at 4 o'clock p.m. Any donations can be made directly to the Anderson Brothers Bank. How would you like to earn $1,635 per week? Start training for your new career. Enroll today at Carolina Welding Training Institute. If you're interested, the contact information will be on the flyer here. These are all the announcements that I have today. Any other announcements will come from the pastor and the congregation. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Scott, for the announcements. Um, just iterate, reiterate the um, Giving Heart service for Sister Jenny Brown Burroughs will be here on next Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, we ask that you come and help us with this fundraiser. It's uh, put on by, I think, the Waynesburg County Democratic Party. Uh, Sister Jenny Brown Burroughs has been an, it's been an instrumental part of this community, serving on the county council and as the uh, chairperson of the Waynesburg County Democratic Party and in other ways. It's, she needs us now. Amen. So let us, show, uh, let us show her and her family how much we love her. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. It says donations can be made directly to Anderson Brothers Bank. And my understanding is a GoFundMe page is already set up um, to, uh, to help support uh, Sister Brennan Jenny Brown Burroughs in, this, in her time of need. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, do your very best and do all you can because this is what being a Christian is all about. The Bible teaches us about doing for those who are in need. The Bible teaches us by, about helping those in need. And so we as the body of Christ uh, need to do as Jesus did. He went around and helped people for no cause. But here we have an opportunity to help one of our community members, one of our church members, who gave all she could to Waynesburg County. And so let's please, sir, please, ma'am, uh, let her know that we still love her. And so please come out and support uh, U.S. Congressman James E. Clyburn will be the guest speaker for this occasion. So please come out and support this event. Amen? Amen. Our Vacation Bible School time is uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. We'll start at 6 o'clock. That's, that's July the 24th through the 28th, starting at 6 o'clock. And we're supposed to wrap up around 8 o'clock. So bring all your children and your adults. You can come. There's a class for adults as well. So come and be a part of our Vacation Bible School as a part of the community can get involved and uh, come and share with us. And on the third Sunday, July the 23rd, is our Children and Youth Sunday uh, at 10 o'clock. So we're asking all of you to come and support our children. You know, if we don't support our children, our children ain't going to come to the church. And our speaker for that morning would be none other than our very own Paige McKnight. So you can come. You don't have to get all dressed up to come and worship with us on the youth and on the children and youth Sunday. They will be doing the entire service. They'll be singing on the choir with our inspirational choir. So our children is going to be handling service on that morning. And they need your support too. And believe it or not, our children are watching us. See what we do. And if you don't support them, they see. They see all that goes on. They may not say much, but believe me, they talk among themselves. So let's come out and support them on that particular day. Amen? Amen. And that'll start our week off 
for Vacation Bible School. That'll start our week off for Vacation Bible School. And I want to meet with all the PPRC members, all the PPRC members uh, following this morning service, all the PPRC members following service this morning. I'd like to meet with you uh, for a few minutes. And it's almost time for a church conference. So we're asking that uh, you prepare your hearts, and if you're willing to serve, uh, I think Ms. Lois will have the forms for next Sunday, and we'll give the forms to you. And please, ma'am, please, sir, fill it out in what capacity you would like to serve, and then we, as the nomination committee, we'll get together and we'll make decisions on that. Amen. Amen, amen. How many glad to be in the number one more time? Yeah. How many feel blessed being in the place this morning? Yeah. God is moving in a mighty way. Amen. And we have to open our hearts to receive whatever God has in store for us. Amen? Amen. 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 If all hearts and minds are clear, we will ask Brother Jimmy. And it's just for one month that the choirs are going to switch Sundays, just for the fourth this Sunday. Month. Yeah, just for this month. And if y'all, for who doesn't know, um, for the Connell, is it Carrell Graham? Connell Graham is, a, is from Williamsburg County. Uh, he's a United Methodist pastor that went to Ohio and stayed in the Ohio conference for a while, and now he's back in South Carolina. Uh, at Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church in Latson. So he's back home. So we ask that you uh, support Asbury, but we ask that you come by and support our program. If you go down there at three, you can come back here at four. Amen? Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> okay. We got ask our acolytes to come and extinguish the candle. Uh, we ask those who are able to stand to stand as our choir uh, lead us in our closing selection. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 